Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and in this video we'll be looking at HDRIs and the advanced environment settings in DAS Studio. So let's get to it. Okay so here we are in DAS Studio. Now the most important thing you should have realized by now to make your scenes look awesome is to have great lighting. Now how can we have great lighting? We can use HDRI maps. So with HDRI maps you will get the lighting that's provided in the actual map and as a bonus you'll get a lovely background to your scene. So this one here, this HDRI map here, is the default one that comes in DAS Studio. So to go to the actual maps, we need to go to Render Settings, Environment, and here we go. These are all the settings here. So we're going to go through them today. So let's start off with the Environment Mode. So with the Environment Mode, you've got Dome and Scene, Dome Only, Sun Sky, which we'll cover in another tutorial, and Scene Only. So with Dome and Scene, what will happen there is you can use the HDRI map which is this one here, the default one, as well as scene lights. So your scene lights here, your distant spotlight, point light and linear point lights. So you could use them together and in a combination to light your scene. Okay. And the other option is dome only, which is basically the, the only light you'll get in your scene is the HDRI map here. Okay. So we're going to stick with that today. So the dome mode, we're going to start off with infinite sphere just so I can explain that. So the first setting we've got here is draw dome. So quite self-explanatory. What that means is if it's on, the dome will be on. So if I click on it and change it to off, you'll see the dome goes away, but you still get the lighting. So the lighting will still be there from the actual dome, which is great. So maybe you don't want to use the actual, the actual HDRI map, uh, but you want to use the lighting that the HDRI map gives you. Great. This is how you can do that. I'm just going to turn that back on. So environment intensity just means how much you want to brighten the map by. So at the moment, the default setting is one. If I choose five, it'll get very bright as you can see. Okay. So the environment map setting here as well, that does the same thing. So what that does is it brightens or brightens the map. So the default settings two, if I change that to five, you'll see that it gets even brighter. So if I put the environment intensity back to the default settings, You'll see it's bright still. Okay, I'm going to put that back to the default settings. So how do we change the map? I mean, this map's great and all, but maybe you've downloaded one and you want to try it out. So how do we do that? We go to the environment map. We go to this here. We actually click on it and then we go to browse here. Okay, so I've downloaded one already called Topanga Forest. And this is the one I'm going to use, a 3K one. Now, just a quick tip here. Um, this is a 3K map. Obviously, if you are only rendering in HD quality, there's absolutely no point in a 3K map because you're just using extra re extra resources, extra VRAM that you don't need to use for your system, and you won't really see much difference. Uh, if you are, say, for example, rendering in 4K, then in, in, definitely go and get a 4K uh, a map. Make sure you download a 4K one, or even an 8K one in this case. And obviously, that will make the rendering times a lot longer, but you'll definitely see the quality there. Uh, it'll be a lot better. So I'm going to choose this 3K one. Click on that, click on open. And as you can see, there it is. This is a 3K one. So the next one is we've got environment lighting resolution. So the higher you put this number, the more the resolution will be clear, the more detailed it will be. So if I made it to, you probably won't see it on this. If I made it like a ridiculous number like this, the resolution, it will be a lot better of the lighting. Now, obviously, you put this up to, say, a very high number, your render times will be increased. So consider that when you do it, the render times will be increased. So I normally leave that at 512. I don't really change that at all. The environment lighting blur, quite self-explanatory as well, is a little bit of our favorite. Gaussian, the Gaussian blur comes on the back here. So if you watch this, look at this. Make sure you look at the screen here. Don't look at what I'm doing. Look at the screen here, and I'm going to turn it on. You'll see it gets blurry. There you go, see, that's what that does. So it kind of adds a bit of Gaussian blur. I'm just going to turn that off again. Next, we've got Dome X, uh, Dome Orientation X. So this is very similar to, for example, the parameter settings here, where we've got our rotate for our figures. It does exactly the same thing. So instead, instead of rotating our figure, we're rotating, we are rotating the actual dome. So if I change that by 100, you'll see that the dome will shift on the X or X axis and it's just changed there. If I reset that back, 
Same here, dome or rotation Y. If I change that to 100, it'll rotate. And there you go, it's rotated by 100 degrees. And I'll set that back. And then you've got the Z, the dome or rotation for Z. Set that to 100 and you'll see it turn. There you go. Okay, so that's a great idea. I'm making great use of the actual the actual HDRI map, you've got different ways to use it maybe as a background and for lighting. So another one you got here is dome rotation, which does the same thing. This actually rotates it by a number of degrees. So if I do 180, you see it's turned it 180 degrees. And that's my, that's what the dome rotation does. So ground texture scale, I'll come back to in a bit. So here we've got ground position mode. This will normally be set to auto, which I'll do now. So this is the actual position of the ground. So at the moment I've turned the ground off. I'll turn it on actually. And there you go. So what that's done is, is this is drawn the, a ground plane. So as you can see, the ground shadow intensity, which I'll set to three, there's our shadow there on the ground plane. So it's actually made a ground plane to catch shadows. So you might want to use that for whatever reason, maybe to catch shadows. So if I set this to manual now, you'll see that my figure's missing the legs basically. So what's happened is, this is, you can set the position manually yourself. So the ground origin X, if I change that to 100, it's gonna move to across by 100. Okay, so I'll put that back to normal. The ground origin Y, so this is the Y axis. If I did 200, you'll see it go higher up and it will just, she's basically disappeared. If I do minus 100, you see the grounds come down and you can see the kind of, the shadows kind of bit down there as well. So I'll set that back to reset that. And the same here with the origin, the ground origin Z axis set to 200 and that will have changed as well. So if I just turn that off so we can see here, okay. Now, coming back to the ground texture scale, what I need to do is turn the dome mode on into, from infinite sphere to infinite sphere with ground. So what's happened now is the HRI map has changed a bit to make it look like there's a ground, there's an actual physical ground that this figure is standing on. And this is where the ground texture scale comes into play. So if I change that to 200, you'll see that the, the ground texture scale has actually moved. The actual scale of the ground has actually moved. So you can see it's moved a bit. And that makes it look a bit more realistic. If you went to a crazy number, say, I don't know, 500, you see it looks a bit more different. Okay, if you went to something smaller, I think the default's 100. So if I went to something like, so as you can see, it doesn't look correct here. Look at this, these kind of lines here. Um, the ground plane is not very good. The with the ground. So maybe you could, if we did that to 50, it'll look even worse. So that's something for you to play with. It depends obviously on what HDRI map you use. So a better HDRI map, you may need to use higher or lower values to get the extra ground to look the way you want it to look. So I'll set that back to 100. Okay, another thing about why it's called infinite sphere is, actually I can leave it on that. So what happens is, what, what it means by infinite sphere is if I zoom in, and then zoom out. You can see that you can actually zoom in and out of the actual sphere with the ground. Okay. So if I go back to the infinite sphere mode, so this is what it means by infinite sphere mode is if you zoom in and out, I'm just using my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. The actual infinite sphere, the ground, the actual HDRI map doesn't change at all. Your actual character changes your character gets bigger and smaller compared to the actual HDRI map. So that's what it means by infinite sphere. Okay, I hope that's given you a little bit more insight into how HDRI maps work and how great they are to light your scenes and to give you that lovely background as well. Um, another thing I wanna show you very quickly is the two websites that I use. So this one here, HDRI Haven, excellent resource, definitely use it. It's got so many HDRI maps you can use. Uh, if I just click on this one, I think it, some of them even got up to 8K, 16K. Obviously you don't need 
to use 8K because Da Studio cannot render in 8K, so no point. But it's there if when if and when Da Studio decide to do 8K rendering. Okay, so this is a great resource, fantastic resource. Make sure you use it. Make sure you also uh, go to the Patreon page and kind of you know give him your support because he's doing these fantastic resources for us, and it's something that this person wants to do, and it's great great resource for us. Another one is this SILB archive. There's some great uh, HDRI maps here. Uh, some some of them I've already used already. Tropical Beach, here's the Topanga Forest. So all the links for these uh, websites will be in the description box. Okay, and make sure you leave a comment. You know, you may have found a website with HDRI maps that you really, really like and you want to share them with the community. Please share, share them on this. Leave a comment and make sure you share it as well. So if you found this video very useful, don't forget to give it a like and make sure you subscribe, leave a comment and make sure you share it with someone that may need help, a uh, great resource. And make sure you check out these videos here and this video here for more about lighting. And don't forget to subscribe here as well. And in next week's video, what I'll be looking at is into the finance sphere and finance sphere with Grant. I'll see you in the next video. And remember that the key to success is joy.